Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I learn songs and how I prepare for different gigs. Coming up. Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry for my absence. Long story short, right after NAMM, I had to cram for two different gigs. And I had about one week to learn about 32 songs. The first gig was a showcase style event for a country music label here in Nashville, Broken Bow Records. Basically, I was part of a house band that played one song with each artist from the label. So I had to learn about 15 or 16 songs. And the second gig I had to prepare for was a week of shows with the hard rock band Stone Sour. So with that, I had to learn and memorize the entire set and be ready to play with limited to no rehearsal. So my method for learning songs for these two different gigs, or any gigs for that matter, always starts the same way. Before I even pick up a guitar, I just listen to the songs. I listen to them over and over again until I know them like the back of my hand. If I'm driving, I'm listening to the songs. If I'm at the gym, right before bed, I'll throw on some headphones. And what this does, it helps me learn the arrangements of the tunes, figure out what kind of gear I'm gonna need, like guitars or effects, figure out if I have any special tunings I need to use or drop tunings, what guitar I need to bring, whether it's a humbucker style guitar or like a telly single coil thing. But when I learn music, I prefer using my desktop computer. This way I can plug in a guitar through my interface uh, and listen through headphones with a track. You don't necessarily need to be able to plug your guitar through the computer, but I do strongly suggest using headphones. That way you can hear the music crystal clear and you can hear all the parts. Usually I'll just use basic stuff like iTunes or Spotify to listen to the music. Sometimes I'll use YouTube. If there are specific parts that I want to slow down, I'll use uh, the software called Amazing Slow Downer by Roni Music. It's pretty basic, but I've been using it for years. I'll throw a link down in the description below. You can loop different sections, knock down the speed, adjust the pitch if you want to. So with the Country Showcase gig, I was emailed uh, a Dropbox of MP3s because some of the material was still unreleased, so I wouldn't be able to find it on Spotify or iTunes. With the Stone Sour set, I was emailed their set list. So I went on Spotify and created a playlist in the order of the songs in the set. And I could listen to it top to bottom like the actual show. And this helped me memorize which songs came after each other so I could make that connection. Now, besides being two totally different gigs musically, another main difference between the two was that I was able to use charts on the country showcase. Whereas with Stone Sour, I had to have everything totally memorized so I could move around and be a performer instead of standing in one place and concentrating on what I had to play. So let's start with the country gig first. After I've listened to the songs a few times, I'm ready to write out my chart. And for this, I use the Nashville number system. Now I'm not gonna go too in depth on explaining the Nashville number system. There's a ton of great videos out there on the subject. In fact, I'll throw up a link to one of my favorite ones right here. So basically, the Nashville number system is a way to write out basic chord charts and rhythms. So instead of using chord letters like C, F, and G, we replace them with numbers that correspond to their major scale degrees, like one, four, five. And we can also denote specific rhythms for the chords uh, using special symbols. It works great for country music, but also some pop and rock. Basically any style that doesn't require specific riffs or lines that need to be written out. If you require just a simple, basic chord chart with rhythms, the Nashville number system is the way to go. Some of the advantage to using the Nashville number system are, it's easily transposable to any key since we're using numbers instead of specific chord letters. And since it's simplified and streamlined, it's very easy to fit an entire song on one sheet of paper. So you don't have to fiddle around with turning pages or those taped up charts. It's quick and easy to write. Many times I'll write out a chart while I'm listening to the song once and I'm done. Now there are some cons. It doesn't work well with rift-based music. What do I mean by rift-based music? For instance, Led Zeppelin's Black Dog. There isn't an easy way to write out riffs or sig licks, but there are ways that I get around it and I'll show you in a little bit. The second con is it requires a little bit of musical theory. You'll need to know at the very least the major scale in all 12 keys, and you'll need to know about the degrees of the major scales. So for instance, like the sixth chord of B flat major, which is G minor. So I have a two-step method to making my charts. Basically, I first write it out by hand on a regular legal pad, and then I'll input it into an iPad so I have a more 
organized, cleaner version of it, which is what I take to the gigs. And I do this because it's faster and more accurate for me to just write it by hand as I'm listening to the music. But I prefer using the iPad on the actual gig because it's convenient. I don't have to deal with a bunch of paper. I don't have to worry about losing any sheets of paper. And plus, this way I have two copies of the charts just in case something happens. So I'll draw a line down the middle of the sheet of paper and use two sides. That way I can guarantee I'll only need one sheet of paper. And then I'll just listen to the song and write the chord changes with the rhythms. So once I make my basic chart, if there are specific sig licks or riffs or solos that I can't really memorize or I just don't want to memorize, then I'll just make a little note in each section. And I'll do this for every song and then I'll input it in the OneChart app. There are a couple iPad apps that I use for all my charting. The OneChart app, which is specifically for uh, Nashville number system. Stave and tabs I use to write out little tab licks. Take a screenshot of it crop it, then I'll open up both files in an app called Documents by Riedel. And this way I can place an image on top of a PDF and combine them. So I can put an image of the tab on my chord chart so it's all in one uh, document. And that's pretty much it. Everything is organized and on my iPad. It's all saved in the cloud just in case I need to access it from like my smartphone or a computer. Once everything is in chart form on my iPad, I'll go ahead and play through all the songs while reading my charts. And if there's anything I forgot or I wrote down rhythms wrong, I'll just use my stylus and scratch some notes in there uh, instead of totally redoing the chart. Most times every musician makes their own chart, so your chart only has to be legible to you. So talking about the gear that I had to bring to this gig, usually on these types of gigs where it's kind of like a poppy, country, very radio friendly thing, I'll always bring a humbucker style guitar like a Les Paul and a single coil guitar like a Tele. Usually those two guitars I can cover all my bases. For this particular gig, I brought my Rock and Roll Relics Thunders Custom as my humbucker guitar. And then instead of a Tele, I actually brought a Strat. I brought my Jeff Sen Custom Fullerton, which is a Strat style guitar. And pedals, I try to keep it as simple as possible. I only bring what I need. I brought an overdrive or two, volume pedal, tuner, eventide delay. It's got a ton of different delays. And the eventide mod factor that has a bunch of tremolos, choruses, just in case I need it. But I think I only use tremolo on the gig. Amp wise, I brought my favorite grab and go amp, which is the Fender Custom Vibralux reverb. And that's it. Two guitars, pedal board, small amp, and I'm ready to go. Now I'm moving on to learning the Stone Sour songs. So I knew I had to memorize them. I really wanted to know them inside and out. So I spent a few days, I think I spent actually two days just learning the songs in the order of the set. So I could familiarize myself with the different riffs, the parts of the songs, intros and endings, solos. I really wanted to be able to sing in my head all of the songs from memory. So after a few days of listening, I was ready to sit down with a guitar and start learning all the parts. And I will say that all the listening I did beforehand, it really did make it easier for me to learn the parts on the guitar. I was able to sing some of the parts in my head and my fingers knew where to go. Now they use three different tunings on their guitars. E flat, which is a half step down from standard, a whole step down from that, which is C sharp. And from there, dropping the low six string down to a B. Kind of like your drop D tuning, but way lower. So for me to practice the songs correctly, I eventually had to set up three different guitars with heavier string gauges for those low tunings. But before I did that, I actually started learning the songs using my secret weapon, which is the Digitech drop pedal. In a pinch, it worked out awesome. The only thing it doesn't replicate is the feel of the heavier gauge and the tension of those strings. So that's why it was important for me to eventually practice on guitars that had the heavier string gauge and lower tunings that I would be using live. So some of the riffs on the low tune guitars were kind of hard to decipher. So I did what most guitar players would do. I scoured YouTube for any tutorials. I looked up tab sites, uh, Songster being my favorite. But you have to be very careful because some of the tab sites and some of the video lessons aren't 100% accurate. Luckily, before the first show, I was able to get with the other guitar player, Christian, and go over some of the riffs. So in a nutshell, I spent two days just listening to the songs, one day sitting down with a guitar and learning all the parts, and then another day practicing and memorizing all the songs and just playing it over and over again. And to make it easier, I would write down little scratch notes next to the song titles in the set list. Little reminders of things like how the song starts or uh, which riff is in this section, stuff like that. So for instance, on one of their songs, 303150, it starts off with this rhythmic intro.
I just wrote down rhythms for the first two beats of the intro just to remind me uh, how the intro goes. And then the next riff went like this. So I just wrote down simple fret positions of where that riff started. So I kind of did that for all the different sections just as a little clue. And eventually after playing it over and over again, I memorized it. It was also important for me to practice this standing up as opposed to sitting down because your hand positions are gonna vary depending on how high or low your strap is. Uh, your, your wrist positions are gonna change and that can affect the way you play certain passages, certain fast licks. Also, I went a step further and actually practiced moving around and kind of head banging while I was playing these riffs because some of these riffs require some accuracy and when you're moving around and head banging, it's kind of hard to be accurate. <laughs> I made it a point to practice that. So gear wise, since I was just filling in for the shows, there was already gear on the road. There were amps, pedals, and actually guitars on the road. I brought two of my guitars just because I didn't know what to expect with the guitars that were on the road, uh, how they were set up. So I wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with the guitars I was playing. So I brought out a Rock and Roll Relics Heartbreaker that Billy from Rock and Roll Relics actually loaned me right before the tour. And then I also brought out a Music Man JP16, which is an awesome guitar, super comfortable. The neck is thin. It's very easy to play some of these fast passages on it. Actually, I'll throw a link to one of the shows that I did with Stone Sour. I had a lot of fun doing totally opposite genres in the span of a couple weeks. It was very challenging learning all that material in such a limited time, but I got through it and they were both amazing experiences. So I hope this video helped you guys get a little bit of insight on how I learn songs and prepare for gigs. Hopefully you can use some of these tips on your next gig. Thanks again for watching. As always, if you like this video, click the thumbs up, leave me a comment down in the comment section. Go ahead and share it with your friends. If you'd like to see more lesson videos, gear demo videos, or music vlogs, don't forget to click subscribe. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.